Great, so for this video, we're going to talk about two things. We're gonna talk about filtering, and we're gonna talk a little bit about mixing. So when we say mixing, what we mean is that when you're adding all these different harmonics and you're adding these different distortions, uh, the sound is gonna get louder. How do we control the sound? And how do we make sure that it stays within the bounds of what we're allowed to do sonically in a, uh, in a doll like Ableton? Uh, Great. So let's start with filtering. Uh, where shall we Where shall we start there? Well, yeah. Let's talk about filtering uh, the voices, right? And it's important to think about this in two ways. We're 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 at a critical place where we're we're going from the last three videos. Two videos have been talking about the individual sound generators, the the oscillators, and things like that. And then we talked about um, envelopes and kind of conditioning those sounds. So now we're getting to the phase where we're starting to think, okay, what do we do with these sounds now that we have them? Uh, and, and that's a good time to talk about how do we mix them and how do we maybe filter them to kind of bring down their levels so that when you have 30 things all going at once, they don't um, totally destroy each other, right? Or become too loud. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have different types of filters as well. So filtering, so when we, normally when we talk about filtering, we're talking about taking a portion of the sound or certain frequencies in the sound and we're, we're diminishing them, we're, we're basically taking them away. Um, so you have what's called, uh, what Aaron has up there, which is called a low pass filter. And these can be a little bit kind of confusing. The way that I always think of them is, if you have a low pass filter, you're letting the lows pass. So you're taking away the highs of a signal, you're letting the lows pass. Uh, so, and what Aaron's done there is he's actually turned up the curve there. So you have a parameter that's called resonance. So what you can do is you can actually accentuate uh, a certain frequency around what we call the frequency cutoff. So uh, and the and the cutoff is basically if we're talking about low pass filter, then the Sorry. <laughs> then you have the, uh, the 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 cutoff frequency is the kind of maximum, the, the highest frequency that you hear, basically, before it gets cut off. Before it starts to attenuate. Yeah. Um, so just to, to kind of make it visual, visual, make it tangible, this is your uh, sawtooth wave. I'll just make it mono. And it's got this set of harmonics, right? So every one of those spikes represents a sine wave. Yeah. And if we bring the filter down, we, we reduce which sine waves are actually getting through. So we'll give it some juice, give it some resonance, and you can hear the individual sine waves. Right? All the way up. Now, um, a couple important things to talk about here, right? This is, again, we're back into like a generative synth. So if you're working on a generative synth, if you're doing a generative synth, you definitely want to take a look, uh, get a, you don't have to build your own, get an FFT viewer, take a look at the sound you're generating. If it's healthy, if you're doing it right, you should see something like that, which is a bunch of sine waves, but they taper and they kind of disappear. Additionally, if you play a high note, um, if you're not anti-aliasing properly, which is a complicated topic and we can get you know way deep into, but we're not going to do it for this video, what you'll see, you'll get bad sound when you play high notes because it will get reflected and you'll have these lower harmonics. I have a few of them. Oh, maybe I don't, not with that one. Um, if we start warping, it gets harder. So then it. Yeah, so these little guys down here, right? Mm. That shouldn't technically be there, right? That's an anti-aliasing error. But in my case, this is an auto-scaling FFT, so I know that it's like 30 dB below the, the sound that's coming out, so you can't really hear it. But those you want to look for, right? When you start generating, you start filtering, um, and don't try to use a filter just to get rid of anti-aliasing. If you get to the point where you're generating sound, so you know, ooh, that was loud, and you see that it goes all the way up and there's some nonsense up top, Maybe you can just filter it out and it'll sound okay, but probably you can't. Probably, especially when you start hitting higher notes, those, those incorrect frequencies are going to get reflected across the sampling rate. They're going to end up down lower and you're not going to be able to filter them out. 
Yeah. That's a, that's a heavy, that's a heavy little, that's a heavy hit. We don't have to go too deep into that, but um, it's yeah. important to have some idea of the, um, the frequencies break down there and what filters do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Cool. So, so that's that. And then we were going to talk a little bit about mixing as well. Uh, yeah. So I'll let, I'll let you uh, take it away with that. So the thought there is same thing, right? Now you've got your wave generator. It's making this perfect, pristine, you know, sine wave or whatever you, whatever. And, and you love the way it sounds and you play 30 of them at once. And all of a sudden they add up and it's just way too loud and it's distorted and nothing's working out for you. Uh, most synths, when they have the mixing phase, uh, come up with a way to selectively attenuate different, um, different frequency, different uh, voices. And the smart way to do this is just to, to build a compressor, have a really good compressor, or look up soft clipping algorithms. Um, soft clipping algorithms just make it so as the sound gets louder, like as the waveform approaches one, it's, it's kind of tamped down right? But it's done in a smart way. So instead of like, we've all seen distorted waves where it goes up and then it flat tops, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you don't want. If you want that in your synth, if you want like a distorted synth, add it later, add it in the effects, add it in some other phase coming out of the generators. When you mix all these generators, you want to make sure it doesn't do that. So you need some sort of smart way to mix them all together. And uh, after, I mean, this could be just add them all up and put a compressor on there and done. Uh, but if you're doing that, you want to be careful about the attack speed of the compressor and, and things like that. Make sure it's responsive enough. And there's soft clipping algorithms. There's three or four of them that are pretty commonly used for this sort of thing. Uh, and they are, they're real time. So right. dig one of those up when you start mixing in all of your, uh, all of your things. Also, we should probably talk about some synths are uh, only monophonic, right? Some synths only have one voice. Mm -hmm. So here, we'll do an example. If we turn this off. Uh, um, you hear that sounds like guitar tapping because it's only playing one note at a time. It's just sliding quickly between them. If we turn down the slide speed, you can hear. Right? So that's another element of synths, right? Some people design specifically um, for leads. Uh, what we, what we, when, you, when you go into the presets and you see a bunch of them called leads, that usually means they only have one voice. Usually means that they do this kind of thing where they can slide between, um, which allows the synth player to do something like a solo guitarist might do when they slide up the neck and you can have all these advanced controls and things like that. So at this stage, when you're thinking about mixing, you want to ask yourself, do I want to have multiple voices or just one voice or be able to support both multi and single voice synths? And do I want to, um, how am I going to mix it if I have a multi voice synth? How am I going to worry about uh, distortion? How am I going to worry about if it gets above the threshold? Perfect. Great. Uh, is there anything else that we need to touch on here? That's the mixing phase. For sure. I don't know. What else you got? <clears throat> so we had filtering, mixing, and then for the next video, I was thinking LFO and mods. Great. Cool. So we'll do that for the next video. Next video is going to be LFO and modulation um, <laughs> modulators.